Hello, I'm Dr Gemma Gilchrist and I'm a clinical psychologist who has a particular interest in working with people who have cancer and their families. And, um, you know, we talk from time to time about a variety of issues on this, on this website and I thought today we'd talk about the very basics of breast um, reconstruction after mastectomy. And um, now I say it's the very basics because it really is. And it's really, uh, you know, hard to summarize the kind of information. And also, you know, one of the wonderful things about modern healthcare is it really can be targeted to your needs. And so there are all sorts of combinations and ideas and things that you can do now with breast surgery, depending on the sorts of treatments that are best for you. So I'm going to talk about things in a really basic way. And I've chosen to do that deliberately because I think people actually find it pretty overwhelming when you first start to talk about um, mastectomy and they have no idea what to expect. So I thought, well, okay, let's just decode it a bit and talk about it. So I'm going to put um, aside breast conserving surgery or what's sometimes called wide local excision or what's sometimes called um, a lumpectomy. Put that aside for now and I'm just talking about when a mastectomy is recommended. So a mastectomy is removal of the breast and removal of the breast tissue. And there are many different and complex ways of doing that. And there are different surgeons that do it as well. So a breast surgeon is typically the surgeon um, that will remove breast tissue in this way. Um, now, what used to happen was a breast tissue, a breast surgeon would remove the tissue and a plastic and reconstructive um, surgeon would offer, you know, would, would be the person to do the plastic and reconstructive surgery if that um, was something that you'd chosen to do. But now there's something called oncoplastic surgery, which really is like a little Venn diagram. There's lots of shared skills with that. And I won't go into that, except to say that, you know, you may be offered different things by different surgeons. And that's because of a different um, skill set, really, and a different expertise about what they particularly do with breast surgery. OK, so with a mastectomy, essentially what's happening, as I said, is there is there's the removal of the breast tissue. Now, sometimes it's possible and it's safe to keep the nipple and your surgeon will talk to you about that. And there's things that, you know, affect that, for example, where the lump is sitting in your breast and how close that is to the nipple. And one of the important things that um, surgeons need to think about when they remove tissue that either does have cancer in it or they think could have cancer in it, they have to make sure that they remove that safely and has, have what's called a margin around it. And the margin is that area of cells which is, when we look under the microscope afterwards, is not affected by breast cancer. So depending on where a lump is, not only might a mastectomy you know, be appropriate or not appropriate, but um, keeping the nipple may or may not as well. So, um, so that's the first thing. So they remove the breast, the breast tissue um, and possibly the nipple, or they possibly reposition the nipple. Okay, so a mastectomy does not have to have a reconstruction. And certainly if you wind back 20 to certainly 30 years, it won't have been routinely recommended. And, and people used to jump to all sorts of conclusions about, you know, whether women and what types of women should be offered, you know, which types of reconstructions. So, you know, if you wind back 30 years, a woman over 60 or 70 may not have been offered a reconstruction. And actually now routinely, now those women are, which is, I think, a fantastic thing and an important thing. So things have changed over time. But that doesn't mean that if a reconstruction doesn't feel right for you, you don't have to have one. So a mastectomy can be removing the breast tissue, flattening that skin area, and a close with whichever particular suture that your surgeon thinks is appropriate. So there's um so once a mistake to me has happened, if you are having if you are choosing to have a reconstruction, there's essentially three three different types that you can have. Okay. One is an immediate um, reconstruction. And what happens with that is the breast tissue is removed, so there's a, a pocket really left there, and an implant is put into that breast area. And the implant will be chosen depending on your, your size of your body and um, the positioning of that breast area and some other things the surgeon will talk to you about. There's actually different sizes of implants, different shapes of implants, round, teardrop. Now this is when it all starts to get layers of other information. 
But um, you can the the immediate breast reconstruction for for a lot of women is a great option because you go into surgery, you fall asleep with a breast, and you wake up with the breast. Now that breast may or may not be um, the same size or shape as the one you had before, but it looks and feels like a breast. Um, now, immediate re breast reconstruction is not appropriate for every woman because it depends not only on body shape and things like that, but it also depends on other treatments that you need. So radiotherapy, for example, can change the picture about whether or not that's the best, um, the best surgery to have at any particular time. So that's immediate breast reconstruction. Um, the second type I just wanted to mention is a two-stage reconstructive process where the breast tissue is removed and an implant is put in, but that's actually an expander or a tissue expander, as they call it. So what happens is, so the breast area, the, you know, the, so the breast is removed, okay? So the breast is removed and the expander is put in and then slowly that expander is expanded and restretches that skin area to then allow the, a pocket uh, to be made and an implant to at a later stage be put into that pocket. So it can be give some flexibility about the size of a breast. It can be great depending on the stretchiness of the skin. And again, that's something that can be affected by other treatments that you might be having before or after. So after the skin is expanded, actually, I should really add there, there are also different ways of expanding that tissue expander. Often it's done with um, saline, which is sterilized salty water, essentially. Um, and that saline is ejected into the implant, which some people go, you know, what, what? But because when the tissue is removed from that breast, so are nerves and so is that, you know, that pain response, Actually, a lot of people say that tissue expansion really feels like tightness on the chest, pushing rather than pain as such. And of course, what happens is the skin stretches and it relaxes into it. And then you stretch a bit more and it relaxes into it. Okay. So again, breast care nurse, surgeon will talk to you about all that. But essentially, a tissue expander is there to expand the skin to allow the, the implant to then be put in. So the expander is expanded. It comes out in a second procedure, in a second surgery, and the second and the other implant is put in. Going back again, the first one, immediate implant, breast tissue is removed, implant is put back in. The second one, tissue expander, breast tissue is removed, and then an expander, tissue expander is put back in, then that's expanded, then that's removed, and then an implant is put back in. So that's two stage. The third one, just to mention, is flap surgery. Now, again, there's a whole variety of ways to do the flap surgery, usually taking um, tummy fat and muscle or bat, fat from back here. Again, you've got to be enough, uh, you know, the right body shape. You've got to have enough in reserve to be able to do that. And depending on whether you're having a single or a double breast reconstruction, that, um, you know, that's all got to be taken into account. So there's lots of microsurgery and very specific surgery done with flap reconstruction. There are things to consider, um, like the, you know, it's a longer surgery, it's often a longer recovery time, your surgeon will talk to you about all that, but also the look and the feel of the breast can be very different and it might be something that works very well if you need radiotherapy. So, you know, clearly my job as the clinical psychologist is not to do any kind of recommendation about what the best medical, um, decision is for you to make whether or not you have you know a lump removed as you know we haven't really talked about today whether you have mastectomy whether you have reconstruction you know associated with that mastectomy all decisions that you've really got to make with your surgeon your breast care nurses your medical team generally as a whole but i do find it it is a look it's a tricky complex area to get your head around so it is worth kind of just getting your head around the basics so hopefully that gives you you know a little bit of insight into you know kind of what those real basics are